There's no socioeconomic or geographic dividers for domestic violence. It occurs everywhere and affects everybody. We want to curb the domestic violence before it actually occurs. If we can prevent the crime, then everybody's better off, including the victims, the families of the victims, and even the perpetrator themselves. We work with social services. Um, for any domestic situation where a child is involved, we're required by law to report that to Child Protective Services. So we in the crisis intervention team would go out with social services and meet with that family after the incident has occurred to see what services we can provide. We do have a coordinated response to domestic violence in Henrico County. It involves uh, numerous agencies that are government agencies as well as non-government agencies, including partners like Safe Harbor, which is a nonprofit entity helping survivors of domestic and sexual violence. Um, so we try to do uh, and provide a number of different services for victims. We realize that the criminal justice system isn't the answer for every victim. And so we want them to also have support services such as counseling um, to help them with the trauma that they've experienced. It's one in four women and one in eight men that are, have been in situations of uh, domestic violence or sexual assault right here in Virginia. So it is truly in every neighborhood. Violence isn't just in actually physically striking someone else, but this domestic violence umbrella actually covers all kinds of abuse, which means verbal abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse, digital abuse, stalking. Everyone deserves a life without violence. A lot of shame is in this conversation. People aren't talking about this. When I do educational events, people don't want to come. They don't want to talk about it. They think it's embarrassing. They think it's happening to someone else. And if it's happening to them, they're too ashamed to admit it. So these are the kinds of things that we have to stop being ashamed to be talking about and be willing to have the conversations because that's the only way we're going to get in front of this. My name is Lisette Johnson, and I am a survivor of an attempted murder in which my husband shot me several times and then took his own life. We were actually trying to work on a separation agreement. Um, he was, uh, it was very contentious. Um, it was very threatening. Many friends said, you, you've been together so long, what's going on, let us help you. And I really didn't want to get into, he's abusive. I, he's verbally abusive, because I didn't want to feel like I wanted to prove my case. I just simply wanted to exit the marriage. That was my only goal. One of the things that he used was, you'll never see the children again, because I'm going to prove that you are an unfit mother, you are not psychologically balanced. Um, all the threats and he knew that that was a real control device for me because I did not want my children uh, to be exposed to his behaviors without me to mitigate. It was a very unclear path that I was walking. I did not, obviously never believed that someone who loved me, loved our children, or said so, would ever shoot me in front of our children, uh, would ever do any of these things. I, I knew it was not going to be an easy divorce, but I had no idea that this was going to happen. Now that I'm a domestic violence advocate, I see these signs, 
they're very predictable, very predictable. They're, it's, a, it's a pattern, but when you're in the middle of a forest and you don't see any openings, you can't see very clearly where you are. I didn't label what was happening abuse because in my eyes, abused people had black eyes, they had broken noses, they had broken bones. He was very controlling uh, and very verbally abusive, um, berating, um, name calling, isolating me from friends. But I didn't see that as abuse and I didn't see myself as a person who would be abused. I did not self-identify because that happened to other people, the Hallmark movie people, not to me who lived in the suburbs in a nice neighborhood and my children went to a nice school. That wouldn't, I wouldn't have fit the profile and I didn't, in my mind, fit the profile of an abused person in a domestic violence relationship. Let's look at this. I mean, I mean, you know, the, the go-to is why doesn't she just leave? Or why doesn't somebody leave? Why doesn't the abuser stop abusing? That's the issue. You know, why should a woman and her children have to exit everything? They will, the, the, the leading cause of homelessness for women and children is domestic violence. That pretty much says it all. What is this? Pizza? You had just called me. I would have known what Dinner ready is a pizza. Honey, please don't be so loud. Please don't. Let go of me! Get in the kitchen! No! <laughs> Do you want to see what hurts? That's what hurts! That's what hurts! Children are very much victims of these cases as well, even though they are not necessarily the one being assaulted or attacked or whatever. They are they are truly victims as well. And I think that that's a very important message for families and for and you know for um, citizens in the community to say like this isn't just impacting you know two people or this you know this is impacting entire families this is impacting children this is impacting you know anybody who's living in a household where there is a violent situation going on and so I think it's just important to kind of mention we do step into those situations to try and get children as part of that protective order or as part of that court ordered service um, that maybe is kind of falling through the crack, cracks a little bit just based on what the actual situation is. Children are one of the biggest concerns in these relationships because they grow up in a household where they are seeing people who are violent with each other, whether it's emotional abuse or physically assaulting the other person. The children may be physically assaulted or may just be observing the behavior. Um, but it, it is such an, a formative time for children as they grow up. They begin to think this is normal. And so whatever they're observing in their family dynamic is what they consider to be um, a normal relationship. And so it's how they form relationships going forward when they grow up. We are going to be assessing whether or not a child is abused or neglected, for sure, and investigating those cases. But we are also going to be providing services. And I think that it's important for people to know that these agencies within the community are truly trying to help. We're also going to be walking you through a process to ensure that you're safe and that your children are safe. It's not just coming in kind of with the hammer like, da 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 da, the, the, you know, you're in big trouble. It really is, yes, we're gonna be looking into it, but we're also gonna be referring you and providing as many things as possible that we can as far as services for you so that we can remedy this situation, so that we're not continuing to come out to your home because of a violent situation over and over and over again. Domestic violence just isn't impacting one person. It's impacting the entire family, oftentimes the neighborhood, the community at large. Uh, it might come into the workplace 
A lot of times if abusers cannot locate the victim at home, they'll go to the workplace. It also impacts the workplace as far as cost, productivity, um, absenteeism. So it has a much larger impact than I think most people realize. And so if you're seeing something or somebody is coming to you, um, it's really a community responsibility to be able to help um, the person and to help identify uh, crimes that are happening in our community. One of the most important things you can do is start by believing their story and be empathetic and be compassionate to whatever they're experiencing. Um, we find sometimes that we compare our stories or we try to figure out, you know, what's more, you know, dangerous or but we really don't want to do that. We just want to sit with them. We want to appreciate what they're going through for, the, for what they are sharing with us. Start by thanking them for sharing what they've experienced with you um, and make sure that uh, they do know there are resources locally. So if they're in Henrico County, Safe Harbor is a resource. There's a regional hotline they can call and speak to anyone 24 seven um, and they can, can connect them to services. I don't think we need to be the uh, relationship police and say you're in an abusive relationship but we can say things like I want to support you and I see some things that concern me and if you ever want to talk maybe you don't want to talk to me but I I know of some resources I you know or if someone has disclosed this is what's going on in my home and maybe I don't feel as a friend I, I know both of them um, I'm friends with both of them. Maybe I can say, maybe I'm not the best person, but I think you should maybe call the Y or call Safe Harbor and see if maybe they can help you. I feel like I might be a little biased here, but I don't want you to feel like you don't have a place to go. Because let's face it, we don't want someone, we don't want to have someone disclosing to someone who isn't supportive. People absolutely die and it can be incredibly dangerous to leave and we want to make sure that you know people don't put themselves in more harm's way by trying to leave quickly without a plan um, and so there are resources to safety plan you can call the regional hotline to safety plan we have worksheets to safety plan that our counselors will go through with somebody um, so it really can be something that just takes a little bit of forethought to make sure that you know it's done the right way Imagine being with somebody who instead of building you up and supporting you, their goal in life is to cut you down at every path. So one of the nice things about doing what I do is affirming women, yeah, you're just this wonderful, strong, dynamic person and your truth is the truth and I do believe you and other people believe you too. Don't believe what you're hearing at home. That's not who you are.